by noon on Friday, which is previous noon on Friday, so the advertisement has been completed. And it's within the time manner, which uh, suggests. Um, before we before we go into departmental budget, uh, I told the last group this, I try to take every group this. The last year, the twenty twenty three audit for Madison County uh, came back with a note uh, from the auditor, and the, and the note from the auditor wanted me to congratulate each department head on a job well done in their budgets. Um, we had a, uh, it wasn't really a discrepancy, there was a, a .0024 margin of, of missing our budget to 100% exact. And he said that that was uh, really unheard of for most county governments to be that precise, but he said I should thank my department heads for that, so therefore I am doing so. Uh, good job. I think on a budget of uh, over $20 million, I think we were about $22,000 off, and we know exactly where it was. There was nothing missing, it was just something that we now pay for. Uh, so, no worries, but thank you all. With that being said, Board of Elections and Register. Do you want me to get up? No, young lady, we can hear you. I think the microphone worked well enough. Right. Um, thank y'all for staying up and talking to us today about the budget. I want to thank the person for helping us through this process. Uh, it means a lot when you've got some money to help you guys along the way there. The only thing that, that everything looked good in our, except for I would like to for you to consider increasing that food line item. Um, you know, in the couple of years back, we tried to go through and, and do something for our co-workers. Well, there is a law that we can't that we can't have a third party give money or do anything like that. It has to come up within the government uh, with our budgets and stuff. So that's the reason I had done the fifteen hundred dollars. Um, I think that's why I originally put that. Um, and then it was let's see. I'm just going to make it away. I'll get my double, my bipolar. They wouldn't, I don't think it would go up about, I think it may have dropped down to about 500 and I think I was asking for 1500 but if I could just get back up to 1500 That would allow me uh, to do something for them. And then we also, I host a uh, regional meeting for our 17 counties. I try to do that once a year. And they come in. And matter of fact, we had one a couple of weeks ago that was a big turnout. We had like 30. 30 people there from the surrounding county, so that worked out really good. Other than that, um, and you know, I would like for y'all to consider maybe, you know, looking into a more secure door. I think I've talked with the chairman and Christina about this before. If we could have a more secure front door there, um, that would be great. I know we TC, I think, has gotten the price from Clark Glass of like $16,000, which was unreal. Um, but it's that shatterproof glass that just kind of, that's on a recommendation from the Homeland Security um, when they come out and do the testing for all the counties. That's what they, you know, suggested for us. Um, but other than that, uh, everything else was, you know, do y'all have any questions or anything that y'all need to ask me? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are budgeting for three elections. And let me tell you what those are. Um, you know, used to be, we could call an odd year, a non-election year, but we have none of those anymore. But next year we are budgeting for three. The first one will be in June, and we know we'll have that one because that's the perfect public service commission seat. That's going to be their primary. If there's a runoff, that will be in July, and then their general will be in November. That brings up city elections that we do for them. Um, there's a chance that, you know, we won't have we will get that reimbursement back from them, but we're we're just we're just going to see how that public service commission race goes first. Uh, that, like I said, that will be June. I think the city of Hull they will have a special because they've had another uh, council seat to resign. So that would possibly be in March, but all of that would be reimbursed to the county that way. But um, and I know this is a little bit more, but I know that. A lot of you probably seen on the news where the SEB has gone crazy. <laughs> That's the state election board. Um, they make rules for us to go by in addition to the laws that the legislation 
the legislators made for us. Well, the law says that you're not really supposed to do anything within a nine month <coughs> period from an election, and we're in the set like 76 a day, I think. And they are making changes to their rules, and that greatly affects our office and what we'll be doing from now until the election. Um, they're not listening to any of us. They're not listening to the state. They're just they are listening to the just average person out there that's coming up with a petition, um, you know, a new proposal for a new rule or something, and that's what they're doing with that. Um, it's very unfortunate because it's going along and it's going to cost the county. Right now, we don't know the large impact that it's going to have just in what we've been hearing. Um, we've had some people call concerned. We've had poll workers call concerned because they're going to have to count those ballots at the end of the night. Um, and I don't mean counting the races. I mean, they're actually going to have to count each page, each paper that's going down that scanner. Well, there's chain of custody issues that comes along with all that. But there again, the SEV is not listening to what, what we're seeing. It's just very unfortunate. But we'll, we'll, we'll work and do what the, the state and the laws are telling us to do. I can assure you that. We've always done it. We'll continue to do what, what they tell us to do. Who does the SCB answer to? Um, well, they were appointed. You've got each party that appoints an individual, and then now they have got where the governor appoints a person, the House, and then the Senate. And with the House and the Senate controlled by Republicans, they have appointed Republicans for those positions. So then you've got a third one for the Republican Party, and then the head is uh, of the chairman. He's appointed by the governor. And then so you've only got the board is, is one Democrat versus all three of the Republicans, so they're they're voting uh, three to one, four to one, you know, whichever that way. But um, it's making it, it's you know, they they're not supposed to show partisanship, but it unfortunately that's what's happening right now. The reason I ask that is if they try to make those changes inside the 90-day window, will the state allow that? I'm not sure. The Attorney General has said, and in his opinion, that he's not going to. They want some cases brought back up that have already been settled in the past, and he said he's not going to allow that. But it's, it's who knows right now. I mean, we are the last ones to know. I, I grant you. I mean, it always is like that. Is the paper issue uh, going to happen before the November election? The switches of new, yes. And we have got it. It came in this past week, so we've got that to last for November. And then we'll get more for next year. Yeah, and that's what that is. It's still the same price. It's sixty-five dollars a ring. Um, there's five hundred sheets. It's got a watermark security uh, feature on it this time. Um, unfortunately, the we didn't have all that much paper left over from what we were using, but they will not let us donate it to a church or a school or anything like that. We have to shred it. So. Um, well, we're, we're one of the fortunate ones in because there's a lot of cabins oh, that stocked yes, up. Oh, yeah, they have. They have. And very now good. they're buying again. Right, right. I understand. But um, <coughs> that's what I'm going to at right now. And as soon as these, I've got copies of the laws that changed this year that has, what has, how it impacts us. I've got a copy of each of them for you. Um, I'm going to give you all one of these now. It's not going to get up. What changed as of now? Yes. Well, some of them changed July 1st. Some will change it to uh, January 1st. Okay. Mm -hmm. Y'all have a, a state association? Yes. Uh, Georgia Voter Registrar's Association, uh, or we call it GABRIO. Uh, it's election officials, too. Um, but they um, they talked to the SEB, and they did not listen to anything. The reason I was asking one of the things that Come by attention about y'all's work is the dates of elections and when elections are held. That is all handed to y'all by the uh, by by General Assembly. Yes. Mm -hmm. I talked to Rob Leverett and I challenged them about recognizing that when they do that, how much how much extra work and how much extra effort expense puts on the counties so for them to to make an effort to consolidate elections. And from another standpoint, when you have an election that say just covers a, a special local option sales tax or or a commissioner is just a standalone race like that, the, the turnout is just... Oh, and, and, and I can go ahead and tell you now that the Public Service Commission race next next year, yeah. we'll have nobody. Right. We'll have nobody. But your cost is essentially the same. That's right. That's right. Anyway, I, I mentioned that, so if, if y'all individually or your state association with us 
could help push the General Assembly to recognize that and, and start to consolidate some of these elections. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. That'd be good. <coughs> yeah, because they're having specials, you know, two or three right. times a year, and, right. and yeah, I completely understand that. I don't have any other questions, gentlemen. Do you all? Thank you. Well, thank you for your for your time. Do y'all need anything? Um, just let us know. We'll be glad to try to help you out as we can. Thank you. Y'all may have read the article. You know, we are facing about nine hundred right now. About nine hundred thousand dollars in red, according to this budget cycle. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All. Sheriff's Department. Go ahead. Hey, buddy. <laughs> you just think you're 900,000. Wait, we get there. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Catch up with Alpha Sticks and put it. I say it's about old with everything. <laughs> uh, of course, if we get the A to you know, sign off on some of the stuff, it would be a little helpful. I don't anticipate uh, a lot of change on Department 50. It's, uh, it's been whittled and stabbed at and trimmed the fat, if you will. I don't foresee any major emergencies, so it's kind of business as usual for pretty much all the way across the board for us. But if there's any questions, of course, your staff is trying to answer. What's your staffing currently? So, our staffing has gotten much, much better. Uh, thank goodness. So, we are two positions down on patrol. Um, just had a investigator, um, long-term employee, unfortunately, almost 20 years, turned in his resignation going to the state. So, um, Say that again. Josh, Josh Smith just turned in his resignation. He's going to the state um, investigation with GEMA. So losing a 20-year guy, which that kind of stuff hurts. Um, so we've got to replace his position. And it's, that's tough. So as far as are we better shape than we were last year, by leaps and bounds. We are. Um, you know, we were six down on patrol at one time. And running uh, 21 on shift and only having 15, we we're killing. I mean, overtime was bountiful, but you know, but, guys. but we get we get applications in. We'd have been very picky on yeah. the hiring process, man, yeah. because it would pay them fees. So, so the thing, there there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and if you will, it'll definitely help. The reason I don't have any comments is because I think I've already went through it and, and made my changes and brought them back before you all, uh, which there were very uh, minute changes. I want to say it was, uh, might have been a, maybe a total of a hundred thousand dollars or a two million dollars budget. So, uh, Uh, one thing I will note, uh, board is that uh, we have almost got a uh, back in rotation with our uh, police cars, yeah. our, our, our sheriff's equipment. Uh, we were several years behind, but over the past four years, we're, we're just about to weed all the bad out. Uh, other than the new ones, it still tears up on a regular basis, uh, just because they don't make good cars anymore. But we're at, actually are finally in 2020s and above for the most part. So, yeah, I got very, very, very few 18, 19s left on, on the road for actual service. So. I still have a 2012. I'm just kidding. We still got run really runs great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And they run better than all of us. It does. It's came through the sheriff's office. So it's okay. Uh, So, uh, you probably don't know about this one. This just came up at 3.45. No. Have you spoke with Susan yet? No, I, no. All this just comes down as I was on my way over here. So, there may be 
there may be a shakeup, potential shakeup in um, our medical with the jail. We may end up going with a different provider. Um, this is what Michael brought to my attention right before we come into the meeting. Um, you will so see in my medical. In my medical. So, yeah. so we're having difficult. We've been dealing with for a little while. Mm -hmm. Jail getting a contract drawn up in the way that it needs to be drawn up. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it's got to do with the insurance that the attorney's asking for, and, and y'all's insurance company is asking for, and it's not being provided. It's like we kind of go around circles here with it. This company here, I mean, it's more expensive, but she laid it out. This is what we do. We explained it. Yeah. So anyway, they, they got everything. Um, and plus they offer a little bit more in-house stuff versus what we have to carry inmates out, like to do x-rays and stuff like, you know, there's certain stuff they can do in-house. And that's all along the contract. Who's the provider? Uh, uh, SEM. I think they're called Southern Correction. Yeah. Something like that. Medical. So that, that's their specialty. That, oh yeah, that's all they do. So they, that's so all they, they got four statements they do. So we used them one time before when we first took off us who we had. And we got rid of them with the Dr. B because they could keep staff here. So of course now that's for everybody, even Dr. B. Um, but also during this time they lost other agents, other jails and seen where they was lacking, which was a lot of was supervising leadership and they had revamped all that stuff and come back. So supposedly, you know, it's a lot better. Um, they talk a lot better. Doing your homework at other yeah. jails, at other sheriffs, they're uh, they're happier with their service that's provided by them than they were in the past, which is they had some of the same issues we did. So uh, I think the issue that Mr. Pruitt has is a whole harmless clause with a liability insurance. And that's where I think there's a point of contention or a point of focus with our current provider that um, he's not either, either he's not able or not willing. Uh, we're not sure. So the whole harmless is all about malpractice. If there's any kind of medical malpractice, we want to make sure Madison County's covered at the end of the day. Uh, we want to make sure Sheriff Morris covered at the end of the day. So, that particular issue is why, unfortunately, um, I can say this, I, hate, I would hate to lose Dr. B because he's fantastic. As a doctor, as a provider, he's fantastic. But if we can't get it to where we need to be to have everybody protected, then it's time to move on. Business is business. It is what it is. Unfortunately, we're probably going to be looking at about $95,000 difference. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. All right. That's the only that's the only sticker shock to any of it, yeah. uh, primarily. And that's and that's the big umbrella picture that has been a hurdle with the sheriff and I have been fighting now for three months or two months or however long it's been. I, I just it's like you said, we're going around, we're chasing the dog's tail. I mean, it's just in circles. Yeah. And there's no reason for that. So either you can do it or you can't. That's a good right group involved that conversation soon. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Trust me. Mike uh, went as far as to write the contract mm -hmm. to give it to Dr. B. Core Care is the name of their um, facility. Give it to Core Care to provide it to Core Care's attorney. They will not sign that contract because I don't think they can meet the demands that the county is requesting because of the old harmless clause. And that's the big that's the big issue because right now if there's some malpractice suit, we're all getting sued. Okay. So that's the big that's the big uh, you know, that's where we are. And that's huge. But I think one thing might help out too if we do this, what I want to do is uh, bring them in, let them explain to y'all what their services are. I think y'all need to know anyway what goes on over there right. as far as because that's a big expense of the jail. So I have I have SEM come in, 
but then explain what they're for and how they can benefit Mass County. Yes, and then Dr. B, we give him the same opportunity to come in and explain himself, and y'all kind of weigh it out. Have they reviewed the contract that Mike prepared? Have they looked at it? No, we don't give them that. So they got their totally different contract, which I'm going to guarantee once Mike looks at it, he's going to say, okay. So, I mean, that's what they do. We, we wanted to start off with, first of all, can the county afford it yeah. before we even start? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Thanks. Yeah. Wait, let's start with the number first, and <laughs> what you're you're talking about uh, per diem and the count ratio and all that stuff. All that fluctuates with the, the money figure. So the bottom line, money's worth that. Yeah. But we started there first, and honestly, we didn't get that <clears throat> answer till an hour ago. Yeah. And I just started on this yesterday because of all this we not getting. We, you know, don't get emails back and forth. But I don't have enough of it. So I said, look. Let's call these folks and see what they can do. I and they had worked all day yesterday and all day today to have this ready by four o'clock. What line item is that going to be under? It's, a, it's under uh, Facility 51 Jail, and it's actually the very last line item. Okay. I'm gonna make, all right. I'll tell you inmate medical. Yeah. So basically what's going to happen, you're going to take inmate medical contract, you're going to add equipment to it, you're going to add pharmacy to it. I mean, and then it would all be one. It's all going to be one okay. instead of separate away. Because they do everything. They're paying for the pharmacy. They're paying for the equipment. They pay for the supplies. They pay for the insurance. And there's an $1,100 contract we can get out of for the disposal of a lot of the meds and the uh, uh, sharks and that type of stuff that we're paying for biohazard uh, type disposal. Uh, they take care of that as well. So there's another $1,100 that's they were paying for that comes included with their price. But you know that's small apples, you know, comparison. But you know, I know we're looking at the money. I think they can bring a lot more to us, which is also if they're doing stuff in house like the X-rays, the lab work, mental health. That's keeping us from having to send somebody out to do it, like the hospital. Okay. So that $95,000, if you're if you're combining all this inmate medical, dental, hospital, pharmacy, and equipment, that's roughly fifty-five thousand. I think it's fifty. Okay. You, you see, those two can't slow out, so it's really like forty thousand uh, so, dollar difference. So the hospital is the, the hospital one is the only one she didn't add into this because a lot of that hospital is you don't have hospital guards. Yeah. I mean that's going to be on that's going to be on us regardless of sending, having to send folks. But a lot of that hospital too is where we send folks to X-rays, lab work. So I'm saying, I mean, just so it may come down from. So it may come. So it may yes. not be the full ninety-five thousand. So we really. It may not. It may not. Be. Yeah. But it, in our budget, was I don't understand the contract is going to be more, but do we have any surrounding counties that use them currently? Uh, no. I have to go back. No surrounding counties use them. Nearly, nearly every one of them is, and that's somewhat core care's thing. Is every other county around here is pretty much with core care, yeah. and they don't have the issue. So I'm not sure where the issue is. I don't know if it's they're, if they're not reading the contract, understanding whose liability is there. You not go. Liability. There you gotcha. go. There you go. Possible. So that's very possible. They don't, they're attorney, attorney may not care. You know, I I can't say. I don't so, know. I think if you point that out to all of them, and everybody puts pressure on them. Well, sooner or later, I mean, even like we like I thought, if we change, then they're gonna be called for hey, why don't change it? But. You know, it's not really my business getting their business to it. But this clause, did something change this year or or was it kind of the same the whole time and, and we're just so, not realizing that? No, so a lot of it is only because we've been floating without a contract. It's just we based it on 2017 contract and the world progresses and things change. And now that the county and the liability insurance provider is asking for more up-to-date contract because they want this new change that okay. Chastain Associates is asking for. And that's what brought us to life. So, okay. yeah. yeah, it boiled down to they were trying to find the correct documentation so who's going to pay the bill if. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what Chastain's wanted to see. And mm -hmm. it turns out it was it was deemed that it was actually going to come back on my one staff, which never really came out of the county. 
Yeah, right. right, which would never be us. And they're like, whoa, we can't do that. We need to let our insurance pick it up, or they should have the insurance to pick it up. We can't hold them. Uh, right. Liable. 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 But we've had that, that discussion at this table, though, the need to review contracts that have been rolled over and rolled over and rolled over for years and years and years without even a superficial review. You know, now, again, the world's changed Absolutely. in five years. Definitely changed in seven. It's not business as usual. And I'll tell you the first, I'm not the guy to have three contracts because insurance is not my game. Oh, yeah. I understand. Well, that's not me. That's a professional thing that needs to be done. I promise you. Yeah, I mean, that's why we have the terms. Uh, so, when, when we think this will be reconciled and will. No, we are still in the world. So, I mean, I mean, roughly, just that what you're, what you, what are you trying well, to make? I mean, I was looking at close to the first, first year for actually doing a. Well, I guess we need to do it whenever. Okay. When it, yeah, they, they, if they draw a line in the sand and says yeah. we can't produce it, yeah, we need to do it like they have to move. So it'll be like it'll be like in the next thirty days. Probably. Okay. Yeah. We hope. They can produce the document. Right, right. I understand. So there has been that in, in, in Dr. B's defense, he has been out of the county. Yeah. I'm sorry, out, okay. out of the states for about ten days. He entrusted his attorney to get the correct uh, adjustments made to the contract, which he sort of did and sort of did, and he had us listed as Morgan County, not Madison County. Uh, those are common mistakes. So it it very well could play out in the next week. Uh, that this that would have submitted works out. Yep. Uh, and it's so great. And if it doesn't, we're, uh, I think Michael was just trying to say, just in case, yep. guys, we got to back that plan. But there's an expense. There, there is advantages to Dr. B, and which is Dr. B was forever and still a staff doctor at Piedmont. And when we send inmates to the hospital, he knows all these guys. He knows all these doctors. They play golf. I mean, they're friends. So he can pick up the phone and literally get me an answer of what's going on because if the county's fixing to be on the hook for a lot of money, there's there's timing decisions that we have to make. Uh, okay, do we OR this inmate? What do we do? Where are we at? So there is benefits that he provides on a personal level that he covers for us that goes undocumented weekly. It's just the course of business. So, for that aspect, I would hate to lose that because they're a Southeast Georgia company. So, yeah. um, but they're a large, lot bigger. They offer things that he that he could. So, right. so we'll play by here. We know the worst case scenario. So That's we'll be all right. Pros and cons. Yep. I heard reference a couple of times here about Chastain's now. Is it still the intent? Uh, I believe that we're going to be moving over to the ACC. Yeah, it happened Friday at 4 o'clock. Have you any choice? Are we bringing in in loop on this? Because Chastain's is fixing to be off the table. Chastain's is, was off the table uh, midnight on Sunday night. Okay. So we had to move Friday uh, to keep on that contract lasting. Uh, Chastain had really nothing to do with what you guys had except for just to update the records and those same updated records will now be updated through ACCG. Uh, all we had to do to bind that agreement, it's still not signed, but it was a binding agreement sent by email saying that we do wish uh, to use ACCG as our, our carrier for 2025-2026. Uh, <coughs> And that, then, therefore, now they'll produce the documents back to us for legal signatures. Well, well that, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Are we bringing them on board now with potential contract changes and, and things like that from the get go so that they know that potentially out of bottoms of our risk? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, Right. Yeah. So there's a there's a tail policy. Yeah. Yeah. So we're ACCG backs up 12 months for all elected officials. 
anything that's happened in the past 12 months will automatically cover it. But I guess what we're asking though is if in this case, what the requirement that that we were talking about needing, we're still going to need that same requirement. ACCG is okay. Yes. So well, I yeah, think so we are. We, def we definitely need to talk to them then and well, yeah. find out. Yeah, for if, sure. if, if Michael's making that, Michael Pruitt, not yeah. that Michael yeah. Moore, yeah. if we have something of an impasse on a contract, an existing contract, or if we're moving forward with another provider, then he needs to be in the program from from the get go. Absolutely. Uh, that, that's what I was trying to do. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt, he is certainly involved in this. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Like I say, we ain't even looked at a contract with them yet because we've just been talking numbers and what they can offer us versus what we have. If you, and then, like this was a yesterday's starting time. If, if, if you guys would, through this office, <laughs> If we could get that in his hands as quickly as possible, yep. a copy of the potential contract that we made, because if there's something glaring in there, we don't want to come up on the eleventh hour with you guys yep. and say, "Oh, we got a problem here." Now. That, that's what I'm getting. Yep. That's right. yeah, from the, and yes, so uh, from the sheriff's standpoint, I think in moving forward, that type of contract is going to be better. Through the board of commissioners. Yeah. It taxes has and, to be. Yeah, that's what, so I'm, that's that's what I'm saying. So what so you know, if y'all want to entertain this, I'll bring them in here. Yeah. To yeah. educate right. y'all as well as what they forward there. Plus tell they can sell their product to you just like the insurance company credit. Yeah. Yeah. And then like I say, we'll bring Dr. B in on another date and do the same thing. Yeah. And, and just just, just and for I'll transparency, be, that yeah. that's actually where all this started. Um, we realized that uh, the, the previous contract had been signed by the sheriff, which opened up liability for him, and it was actually be supposed to be voted on by the BOC and signed, and, and that just somehow fell by the wayside over the years. Uh, no ill intent in any of it, I'm sure, but we're, we're going to get it corrected. All right. Any other questions about the jail or sheriff's office and champs? And or SRO. I do got a note on uh, E911. Uh, Brennan, it took like five minutes for me to look over your budget, so good job. I flipped it over and said, Thank you, Jesus. I didn't have to go over. That was perfect. Thank you. Jeff did that. He put them in the line. Really? He put them in the line. Well, you just done the coloring. You done the coloring. Either way, it, it was very simple. So we knew coming into today that most of these right here were cut and paste. We'd already worked the bugs out of it. Still wanted to give the board of commissioners the opportunity to ask any question. So, just on the SRI, so the so only thing we're doing is taking care of their. We have to pay the workers' comp, the pension, and the medical, right? And I was going to ask you, Jeff, about that because I didn't really highlight that area. I didn't really know in the past exactly how much you take when you go back to bill for that. So I kind of grab just the salaries and like the taxes and the uniform, part of the uniform. But maybe you can explain to all of us exactly what you take into account when you are making so, that bill up for them. <laughs> so the agreement forever and a day with a handshake with the sheriff and the two former superintendents ago was and and here understand at the time we had two people there was two employees there was a lieutenant and there was a sergeant so the sheriff at the time agreed to cover expenses for the lieutenant because that's kind of the liaison between the board of education the school the staffing the sheriff what's going on and it's kind of grown from there. So, at the time, there was a uh, there was an agreement that the sheriff covered 
that lieutenant and everything else was covered by the BOE. Okay, so I'm under the impression that we cover Justin Hanley 100% and all the way down underneath is covered now by the BOE. So that's what I kind of thought we were billing. What I tried to tear apart is everything we can recap, uh, recoup from them, um, all the way down to their ammo for qualifying. I mean, everything. Like, everything's broke down. Like, uh, body armor. I mean, everything. Everything. Typically, that's where I try to uh, take a stab and say, okay, we're going to send five guys to this type of training this year that those five guys are going to cost me $3,000 for the year. And that's I just stab it. I try to get Irene to give us the best numbers we can from the road department for all of our vehicles for gas. So that's collected and so So um, you're billing them for everything you can. Yeah. yeah. Everything I can. If they want them, they pay for them. Well right. every service they use. You're yeah, billing them for every yeah. service they use. And, I'm gonna take, and they've, they've been pretty good. I don't know how the how it's going to be, new circumstances going to be, but it's been worked out pretty good. Uh, if I went to them and said I needed something, okay. Yeah. We haven't had any hesitancy yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, if I want a laptop full, okay. Yeah. So I'm saying, I'm, I, I was just when curious. When this apart, you can basically have one column for the lieutenant and then you can all the other expenses. You can right. And, then we break and, it and that's kind of where Department 53 came in, so it was easier. Easily tracked. See, we but, just have done a Department 53 this year. Yes. After after Jeff and I, after we sat down to bill them at the beginning of the year, it was like, Jeff, we got to fix this. We can't track this. This, this is hard. So that was where 53 came from. So this is really the first time that this has been done. But it was in an effort of trying to track. And Alan also went so far. We, 53 is actually under the vehicle, mm -hmm. so we can track that mm -hmm. also. Yep. Um, it's just a matter of, of us making sure. So basically, and I didn't want when I did this, I was struggling because you, you and I were missing each other a little bit. And so I, I kind of grabbed just the top portion because I wasn't real sure how much of this. So at yep. some point, you know, yep. We can, we can sit down and work it, work yeah, more about it. I mean, so the way it's looking right now is we're covering about 28,000, which still is really low if we're covering the yeah. one yeah. lieutenant. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we got an SRO in each school plus the lieutenant. Yes, actually, and they're actually wanting to add one more in the middle school. So I don't have the staff to do it yet, but that's a future plan at some point. Um, in day to day, the lieutenant does he like visit he, all schools or is he, he going he to He is assigned 100% at the high school because that's a bigger complex. And if anybody is out for any significant reason, they go to the lieutenant, he's changed the man. So they go to him and say, Hey, I've got to leave or I've got this going on. He goes to that school. Because so we never, yes. So okay. um, it, it's a, it works out really well, to be honest with you. I don't have a school that goes unattended. So that way, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Right. Any other? Thank you for that. Let's get the supervisor, and he can yeah, yeah, the walk, in, sure. yeah. walk in the sure. door. And, you know. Oh yeah, I yeah, I don't, and I think it's great what you're yeah. doing. I just trying to understand. Yeah, that's fine. Frank, you say you want something out of him for Paul, or something extra? You don't want to add? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we're real happy to Brian. Who you got, Matt Brian? Okay. That's good things. Mm -hmm. That was good with kids. Too. Yeah, very good with kids. Good with loving. You high fives everybody in the morning. <laughs> you out there doing traffic duty in the afternoon? I blame you. Can you dance? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you fit in. You fit in with the elementary school. Y'all get one. Well, sheriff, if it's nothing else, we'll move on to the corner, and y'all. You're out before six o'clock, just like you wanted to. I wanted to be here until seven. Oh, you did? Well, you get to stay here. You get to stay here and turn out the lights. Uh, 
one thing I did want to mention right fast, Jeff, before you leave, uh, because I know you put a lot of time and effort into this, along with help, you know you and Susan back and forth. Uh, me and Michael sort of has the easier part of this. Uh, I still got to brag again. No other county in Georgia has the relationship that, that myself and Michael have, along with you and finance department, to make this happen. So, guys, thank you. Yeah, Everybody will tell you this don't never happen in any county. Like you saw it before, it don't work this way. So we got something special. I appreciate it. Hey, when you get to the corners, uh, I'm giving him an office up there, so we need some paper to get rent. Rent him out. He's trying to take care of that. Yeah, go ahead. I got to make a phone call real quick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We've never really met officially, I guess. My name's Scott Barry. Um, I was the only one that rang it, so, you know, here I am. <laughs> Condolences. Thank you. Um, I love it here. Uh, I've been working with Michael for about two and a half years now, and I just really appreciate him. And um, we don't know each other on a professional basis. I was a sheriff in Oconee County. I've dealt with county commission, county issues. Um, I've been sued more times than anybody can imagine. Um, I've, I made 12 years of sheriff. It kind of come with the ceremony. But, um, I just really appreciate y'all, and I'm looking forward to working with y'all. Um, so anyway, what you got for me? Susan, you want to start? Uh. I don't know. Actually, I thought it was it was pretty easy work with you. Actually, I think we we did pretty good here. So, so Scott, I want to. I can promise you, Scott. Most of the folks that you'll be handling here won't sue. No, I, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. The lawsuits are about over with. Um, well, I'm. I'm the way I envision this working, I don't know, is, the way I envision this working is significantly different from the way it's been done in the past. <clears throat> I think there's a any any system set up by law or by ordinance or anything like that where you're paid by the piece, which is what essentially what the corner does now. Um, she's paid by, not only does she get a stipend, but she gets paid to transport bodies, she gets paid to investigate deaths, she get, or whatever it is that entails. Um, she's nickel and diamond governing authority, to me, in my opinion, and um, I want to put a stop to that. Just pay me once a month. <coughs> Whether I work or not. So uh, we've I've, also our staff has worked with uh, Mr. Barry on drafting a new ordinance for a corner. We don't currently have any ordinance for corners in the state law. Chapter 45 is, is very vague. A lot of counties, a lot of attorneys have talked about those requirements around corners. So we've worked with Mr. Barry on. You have a document that's attached. There's been a few little changes that the attorney has done to those different wording stuff. Um, and that's kind of how we drafted this, is that the salary position and the other, the deputy coroner's pay will be greater than the state minimum, so we can supersede that with a straight salary instead of, like Mr. Ferry had said, individual invoices for each death, individual transports for each body, multiple transports. All that clarified in this ordinance. We've got in some conversation about what is what is required by, by the state for the quarter pay is it are we going to be good at all that? Yes, we will. We'll supersede supersede that because we'll put uh, Mr. Barry at just a straight salary. Uh, so we won't do uh, like the state the way they do the, the way they calculate your pay too is based off the population. You get mm -hmm. a certain amount, then you do a COLA each year, we'll find out, and then the county can give an extra stipend. Um, and that's how it's currently set up. It's an extra stipend plus um, 
the coroner, deputy coroner, turn in an invoice for each investigation and each transport. It could be the same body that's transported multiple times. Mm -hmm. And that's what our conversations with, before uh, Mr. Perry ran, we were working on the ordinance and working with the current coroner and the attorney we have and, and trying to finalize that for finance to make it simpler. Uh, and then when Mr. Perry was elected, so we just, we did previous history numbers, that trend, there's been a lot of conversations with Mr. Berry and staff and the attorney, and that's how we've gotten to this this point. This is something we'll vote. <clears throat> yeah, that will be for September. We've just got a few little more tweaks that the attorney is going through. Um, so yeah, so, so this will be what we call investigation fees? All yes. The yeah. fees. There'll be no monthly invoices to the governing authority for fees for anything. Yeah. Well, no. What does the matter say all fees will be handled within the county budget? What's that mean? On within the, the budgeted within line the budgeted item. Line item. So on, the, on this yeah. Yeah. budgeted line item. So on it's 35000 okay. it's, it's, it, it's not in any other budget. It's, it's right. all in this budget. Yes, right. sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. So there's I just want to clarify. Make sure. yeah. So to, to help out also, the, the states, it could be on the November ballot a potential uh, corner base salary yeah, may increase and what we've done was we used the numbers uh, to base this salary off the potential if it passes in November because our our population base will go to this number anyway so whether it passes whether it don't we feel comfortable with this number because this number was a division of math based off the previous cases worked over a two or three year period it totaled those numbers so therefore, the only uh, uh, corner barrier will only be receiving uh, 12 divide, divided by 35,000. Yeah, I got you. Period, no questions asked. Right. Uh, on the, the deputy corner, that is a $24,000 allotment for investigations and or transport or combined or combination of both. Now that number won't We'll have to track that number only based off of a head cap. Say once a month, they just said, hey, by the way, because that's paid out in $250 increments instead of necessarily a salary. We don't care how it comes because we know it's to $250. We just, if he sends a thing and says, okay, we work for 18 people, we know to cut a check that month for 18 times 250. So are we looking at just having one deputy yes, corner? Sir. One. One? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, there is some unknowns in this budget that we discussed uh, with Mr. Berry, and that is the education and training, obviously, which will be uh, most of the time that one-time deal up front. That's the most expensive one, and then travel one. And then there's the, the CEUs that will come along with it. Uh, I think uh, very proud, of, and Mike Pruitt also is very proud to have a, an actual contract, un, unlike the state of Georgia. Uh, this was just brought up two weeks ago, uh, Article 45 or Title 45 uh, and the whole trans transport deal. It's, it's a mess at the state level and will be one of the only counties that actually has a, a good written document in which Mr. Berry, uh, Ms. <laughs> Ms. Baxter, Ms. Payne, myself and several others comprised, including Mike Pruitt, to get us a good working document for everybody. And I think we've all come to agree that document will work. Uh, so, so. You already have some of them. Yes. Yes, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> I told you. I knew what your question was. But effectively, with moving the salary increase, uh, you're talking about. Actually, it's going down. If, by the time, if you look at what you pay her over historically, over the over the years, she's she's actually made a little over fifty thousand dollars. When you when you look at what you paid her in investigation fees, transport fees, and everything else, actually, yeah, yeah, that no, the, no, no, the money's actually gone down. Well, all I get the budget sheet, and I see 1905 going to 35. The point I'm making is the transportation autopsy fee at the bottom goes from 16.5 to 1,000. But the note out here says that the corner we will budget for outside emergency transport. Right. That's in the been a that's a safeguard in the event I have to hire an outside company. 
they charge two hundred fifty dollars, and I, I guarantee you, I'm probably not going to touch that money. But I had to have that safeguard built in there just in case of disaster. Just, just to clarify, the, the 19.5 is the current <coughs> salary that's mandated yes. to the current corner. Yes. But there's backside fees of yes. $175 per investigation on top of that. Yes. Uh, there's also trans transportation fees that's been gathered at $150 on yes. top of that. So it actually, the math worked out. Uh, you might, and I don't. For some reason, it's not on here, and I guess that's... Well, it is. So oh, it's at the bottom. There you go. Transportation autopsy, 16.5. Yeah. Go back to... That would, would add back to the cost. Add, back to the, add that back to right. the salary. And then also, do you see the line where it says... It so read in the deputy? So that's, no, there's another one in there. There's another one. Do you see the line oh, where it says deputy coroner services? The, the red means that's what it will say in 25, so it's actually the coroner services for now. So you'd have to take that line and add all of that. So basically what's been paid out to her is the coroner service line, the wages line at the top, and then the transport line. If you have to take those three numbers to figure out how much currently the county is paying out. But so the thirty-five plus twenty-three potentially. Okay. But the twenty-four appropriated was eighty-six, and the twenty-five recommended is eighty-five. So overall, it, the total budget stays about the same. Yes. Yeah, it's doing it a different way, right? We're going about it a different way. Right. But I mean, and basically, the the money is basically staying about the same. We're just correct. Yeah. That's okay. Correct. I mean, That's you correct. look at it though. But and it may come down, like Tiff, we kind of we kind of did put we kind of looked at education and traveling, and, and it pushed a little higher because we really yeah. didn't know what to expect quite yet. Understand. Yeah. <laughs> Understand. Starting with new, so. All right. Any other questions? But we won't have to deal with all the. Paperwork of all that, in, correct? Of the billings and all Basically, that kind of stuff. Yeah, at, at the end of each oh. month, all he's be, all he need to do. I mean, he don't need to do anything for for his own self, but for the deputy, basically, it's going to be a form yeah. that he'll send in and just say, you know, this is how many uh, transports or this is how many investigations the deputy did. He keeps that two hundred and fifty dollars. So the deputy will still be able for the yeah yeah per case yeah. per case instead of two twenty four thousand it says right here it's going to be a ten ninety nine contractor with a flat right. yeah. rate of two hundred fifty dollars right? that's right yeah. per call so is that all the employees doing that now or just the salary that will have the deputy going to do the same thing yeah. correct yeah. correct any other questions yeah. as a toast thought we were trying to find a way to simplify it. But we want to be fair, you know. Twenty-four thousand dollars is facial estimate based on the yeah. number of number of investigations we have here, have it historically. Yes, yeah, sir. And the best we can tell. Sure. Right. The numbers are hard to get a handle on. I'm going to have a website that has the exact numbers, and and you won't. You won't need to ask me how many people died no in Madison County or what. Because I'll have a, I'll have it on the website. So, it's all there's, it's all general. There's a report generated that the coroner has access to. We push a button and disseminate that information. Well, and another thing that will change flight transportation. Currently, when you trans one body, you can transport it from the scene to the morgue. To the medical examiner, and each time that is a fee that is yes. charged. To where now with Mr. Berry, it'll just be one two fifty fee, whether they have to transport the body three times, five times, one time, it's one That's rate it. per body. Okay. And yeah, it's it's live. I can't say much. Anybody got any questions? I'll be more happy to inform them off the record. Mm 
And so uh, the indigent, which I think is that's 1800, which is not, it's just showing that it, that's a little higher than what it has been. Well, I guess Correct. in 21 it was. Correct. But I guess it costs more now, right? Everything costs more. It does. It does cost more. Um, Which I really represent, so it's uh, about the stone recovery. Typically, you go back and try to recover that from the families if we. Correct. Because you're just making an allowance for some that may not be in the recovery. Absolutely. <laughs> you are correct. And, and, and honestly, since I've been here, there may have been two, yeah. I think. I, it, it's not often. But we just always, in the past, they've always budgeted just a little bit to kind of cover just in case. Uh, there's something else I just noticed. Uh, the, the new ACC, we, we was informed this morning, uh, well, actually, we knew about it Friday, and I didn't bring it up earlier. But you know your bond on here, Scott? Yeah. So the new insurance policy covers all That's the That's where I figured. Yeah, that'd be the same yeah. as the sheriff's bond. Yeah, same, 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 same as the sheriff's bond. Yeah. So the sheriff's bond and all the employees on that five hundred dollar bond, my bond, bond, bond covers everything. Right. Bond, uh, all, yeah. all those are covered under our insurance policy. Also we don't do them separately anymore. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Any other questions, gentlemen? Any questions? Good to see y'all. Yes, sir. Uh, soon is there anything else you'd like to bring before us? All right. I got I think I'm tied down the um, rest. And then with your big news of going back and taking out the bond, I'll go back and Take that out. We all need that. Yeah. Okay. Gentlemen, do you have any other questions? Yeah. Appreciate it. That was adjourned. I knew. I knew. What's the better? Let's go see it. Let's go see it. Let's go see it. Okay. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all.